I refuse to go on Friday night. I won't be at your prejudging because I refuse. It's so disrespectful. What's up, desktopers? Xavier Wills here for Desktop Bodybuilding. It's Olympia week and we have another bodybuilding news video. This one, we're going to kick off with an update here from Mo Foda before we get into all the Jay Cutler and Mr. Olympia news. And Mo Foda, this is him about a week out from that 2024, maybe six days out of 2024, Mr. Olympia, looking really damn impressive. I love this dude's structure and I think he's coming in better than he came in earlier this year as well. The shoulder to waist to the way the quads come out, a really, really pleasing structure and physique. And I think the more time he spends with Stefan, the more time he spends gaining muscle and the more time he has in the gym just getting that muscle maturity and the density to his physique, I think it's going to be the difference between him placing like inside a top 10 at this year's Olympia or outside the top 10 potentially, but very, very impressed with him. Now on to Chris Bumstead, C-Bum, potentially prepping and only days out of his last ever Olympia, potentially his last ever Olympia. We may see him for another year or two more, no doubt, but looking very, very conditioned in his leg training videos, uh, just put out an arm training video as well. Almost looks a little bit flat there, which he absolutely should be at this stage of his prep. So all signs look good from Chris Bumstead. The only thing that I'd say sort of popped up at all in any of his recent videos, because he put out a few daily videos, the links are in the description below to those, is that he said this uh, when he's speaking to his uh, therapist. I don't know what sort of therapy this guy specializes in, but he said this about a recent little uh, twinge injury, whatever you want to call it. I had some on and off neck pain again. Okay. I did like a weird. I was doing like lying on a prone 45 degree lateral raise, but it was like the long bench, so I put my head on it and I was like going like this and I tweaked something in my neck the other day, wow. which is gone. But then the day after that, I got a horrible headache last night. And then that all night, woke up at 5 a.m., just like awake. Mm -hmm. And then I laid on the end of my bed like this for like. <laughs> An hour, and then it got better. <laughs> you want to start with you. So yeah, that's about enough of that. But Chris sort of goes on to talk about that sort of stuff. And sleep is so important in a bodybuilder's prep, but it's so often a thing that gets sacrificed. And it's one of those things that just, you know, it's prep, you know, you don't sleep. But I always wonder if the guys that get the most sleep, potentially they look better, but at the same time, maybe they're not in as good condition. And that's why they're getting more sleep. Anyway, catch 22 of uh, bodybuilding. And it's pretty much playing the percentages when it comes to it. But you can hear Chris here, he also talks about his sleep a little bit more too. I'm tired when I started, now I'm a little bit like overtired wired, so I'm probably not going to sleep tonight. But I don't sleep any night, so welcome to prep. Love to see it. So you can hear Chris talk a little bit more about the lack of sleep and what goes into it there. But overall, I think it's all good signs from Chris Bumstead, for the most part at least anyway, that minor neck thing. But as long as he's not having any health issues, as long as he's not having any major injuries, we haven't seen the upper body in terms of like his full updates, but we've seen enough to know that he's in good shape as long as there's no tears, injuries or anything like that, because we know C-Bump is definitely prone to that. And by the way, Chris Aceto is talking about his client, Ramon Dino. You've got obviously Wesley Viss is coming. You've got all these other guys that are aiming to get in there and mix up that top group at the Classic Physique Olympia with nearly 60 competitors, I believe, again, or I believe it's over 50. So there's plenty of good guys in there that have all won pro shows that are looking to take Chris Bumstead's title. So there is a distinct possibility that could happen this year, but honestly, I don't think it's going to happen. I think C-Bum is too good unless there is an issue. Now we have a four-day out update here from Keon Pearson, your 212 Olympia champion. It's going to be a head-to-head -head between he and Sean Clarita, multiple-time 212 Olympia champion for the title this year. And Keon, I think many people are going into this thinking this might be a bit of a foregone conclusion because Keon has improved so much. We've seen in the updates, you see in this update here, four days out, he looks phenomenal. Now, conditioning-wise, that is where Sean will just have to come in and peak at his all-time best, the fullness, the conditioning. We know he can specialize in that, and that's where he'll have to win it. But Keon is looking in great shape, best shape ever at four days out. And I honestly think we're going to see an all-time best Keon. And then I think maybe after this year, Keon will move from the 212 into the open class. I'm going to see an even better Keon. But he still has room to move inside that 212. Keon is still a little ways from capping out this division. So... 
yeah, Keon looking very, very impressive. And let me know in the comments, do you think Sean Clarita has a chance to take that 212 title back off Keon Pearson? Attention anyone who's going to be at the 2024 Mr. Olympia. Leslie Timble, registered psychotherapist and performance coach, will be there on the ground at the 2024 Mr. Olympia. For any athletes that may need her last minute with any sort of mental coaching for their Mr. Olympia, their Miss Olympia, whatever division you may be doing at that contest, she will be there. Or if you are someone that just listens but wants to book in a session with Leslie, she will be available for that as well. Anyway, the link to her Instagram profile is in the description below. Contact her if you are in need of help. And now onto the story of the video. Jay Cutler has spoken out and in protest is not going to the prejudging of the 2024 Mr. Olympia and the Expo as far as we know. So this was on a recent episode of the Cutler Cast on the Cutler Cast channel, which is a podcast he does with he and manager Matt. And they had Martin Fitzwater on there who's doing his debut Mr. Olympia this year. Great interview, by the way. The link to that is in the description below as well. But it was very interesting on what was said in this podcast and started with talk regarding when Martin might be on for pre-judging this year at the Mr. Olympia. And let's get into that conversation and what was actually said. I started transitioning my training to about the time when prejudging would be. So my body Do we know was, when it is? When, well, we haven't the past few years. So I- <laughs> Want to rant? <laughs> I, 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 I talked a little bit about this today and I said it's, it, I refuse to go on Friday night. I won't be at your prejudging because I refuse. It's so disrespectful. You know, if they told you guys, you're going to be on at nine. And they put us on it. Yes. Put you on at nine. Jay said it is so disrespectful. And he said, I'm not going to prejudge. And this is in protest. This is fully in protest to what time the guys are going on stage. And Jay is standing up for the athletes here. This is actually huge because only a sh few short years ago, Jay was the Olympia ambassador. And now it's to a point where Jay in protest is not going to the Mr. Olympia prejudging. And this is Jay Cutler a four-time Mr. Olympia. If I was the Mr. Olympia crew, I would be doing whatever to get Jay Cutler there and I'd be listening to Jay as well because we've heard this from the athletes. We've heard it from the fans as well. And I've heard it from fans attending in terms of the timing of when these guys are on stage. It's not conducive to the East Coast of America, which is a huge audience. It's not even conducive to other parts of the world too. And I'm just not sure why there's the reluctancy to change. But anyway, let's listen to what else was said here as well. They they got they, they should want, start with the men. They, they the really should start with the men. Yes, if they want to see the best bodybuilders, they need to do. So why it building is. show? It's not a yeah show. yeah. And I mean, the thing is, is like all due respect to the other divisions, we love them. But like, if you want to see the best it's, peaked open guys, it's called the Mister Olympia. And the the cool. So let me just pause it there and go back to what Jay just said. Open guys, it's called the Mister Olympia. And the the cool. So Jay saying it's called the Mr. Olympia. Prioritize the Mr. Olympia. This show started with one division, the Mr. Olympia. You know, with Larry Scott winning the first title. This is what this has all been built around. The Expo, the all the other divisions, everything is built around the Mr. Olympia title. Whoever wins the Sandow. Sandow. Sandow? I'm getting confused. Anyway, whoever wins that trophy, the Eugene whatever it is, whoever takes that, that is the winner of the entire contest. Now, all these divisions, they do matter. Obviously, the 212 Olympia champ, the classic physique Olympia champ, that is the pinnacle of the sport in their division. But the Mr. Olympia should be about the Mr. Olympia. It should be about the athletes. If the athletes want it, the fans want it, everything. Now, I will say there is many complexities in terms of putting on a massive show and the grandeur and all that sort of stuff, which we have heard been spoken about you can still do the grandeur in a way where you don't take away from the rest and you can still do it and schedule it in a way that sort of pleases everyone you can still have the bodybuilding last if you want you know i speak to these guys privately and i i hope that the mr olympia do their due diligence and speak to these athletes individually and they're able to have open and honest conversations where it's not a you know you have to just say yeah cool can't wait for the olympia thanks you know because you want the athletes to be able to speak openly and that's why I'm glad Jay is speaking up for the athletes. Anyway. Coolest, craziest physiques. You got to tell us when we're going to be on because we're, we're timing it down to listen, 10 minutes. minutes. You know, yeah, you got just, a 20-minute window of looking this, Does the Super Bowl start at a specific time or do they have to have 
you know, some sort of yeah, uh, I told, I told clearly. Why are these guys tending at the Mr. Olympia to come in worse at prejudging and then the next day they tend to come in so much better? Now, could it be a timing thing where they're not trying to push it too much for prejudging then at finals they're like, oh, we can see what we look like and they improve? That's part of it, for sure. We know the realities of this sport. We know people even do things on the day that, you know, they're trying to time things with food, with drugs, whatever. And I just think that should be prioritized. And that's why Jay says, put them on first. I say just have set times. We never want it to be at a stage where we're rushing the bodybuilding at the end to get off when the bodybuilding should be the most featured division. And this is coming from a guy who competes in another division. I just want the best version of the Olympia. And I think all the fans, the athletes, and everyone wants the best version of the Olympia, the best version of those athletes on stage. And so we can see them the best as well with the stage production and everything. Anyway, let me know your opinions in the comments below. Do you agree with Jay Cutler? Will C Bum win the 2024 Classic Physique Olympia and all that good stuff? That's it from me. My name is Xavier Wills, Desktop Bodybuilding. We are out.